guys. Afraid we don't have any fancy editing on this one. I gotta do this one in one take. So, uh, this is our rotational motion uh, experiment. Uh, this is probably the most complex setup of the ones that you're gonna be doing independently. So, I wanna take you through each of the individual parts. Uh, so, let's do a little bit of a walkthrough here. We've got, first off, the, the main body of our, uh, of our experiment here. Um, we're just resting on a ring stand, and then we have this pipe that has a string at, uh, wrapped around the bottom of it. And at the top of that pipe, we have that T-joint with arms going off on either side, and then weights hanging down from the two sides. So the idea here is that if I pull on the string, the whole thing starts to spin. Rotational motion, there we go. All right, now... We're actually going to pull on the string by hanging a weight over this pulley. So we've got uh, this pulley apparatus clam clamped to the edge of the table, and we'll just let that string feed under or feed right through there. And make sure you get it resting up on the top there. Okay. Now, as you do this, you're going to be winding and rewinding this thing. And so it helps to have a finger on this to kind of guide where the string goes. Um, I also noticed that if the string uh, overlaps itself ever, you get some little jolts in the motion of this, and so you don't get very good data. So you want to kind of try and keep that, that winding as tidy as possible on this. Now, in addition to, uh, to the apparatus, we're also going to be using uh, the Explorer unit again. Uh, this time, though, we have, you'll notice two things plugged in. We've got the force sensor, but also the motion sensor. And so let's organize those things now. The motion sensor we're going to put down on the floor so that it sits right underneath where um, that weight is going to hang so we can track the position of that. Now, that information, since we can measure the radius of the little spindle, um, will be enough to figure out uh, how this big thing is rotating. Uh, we're also going to hang the force scale uh, from this little hook at the end of the string. Easier with two hands. There we go. And then I just put a little, uh, a little loop of string on the end and that allows me to put some extra weight on there. There we go. Okay, now mine's caught right now, and that does tend to happen on this one sometimes. So uh, you just get the uh, the string rewrapped whenever you need to. It'll be good to go there. There we go. Okay, and we'll twirl this thing back up, get this back up to its highest point. And just double check the alignment, make sure everything's set up underneath. Okay. We should be good to go from here. Um, so on my Explorer probe, uh, I'm going to measure both the force and the position of this thing over time. Uh, I can use that force to figure out that, well, that'll be the same as the tension in the string, which is the force that's causing a torque on this apparatus. Um, and then uh, you know, I, can, I can also track position. Um, it'll record, the, the Explorer probe will record both of those values at the same time but it only display one, so you'll need to go back and forth between those two. So the idea there, there we go. If you need to uh, switch to the other mode, is you just press the check mark, and then that cursor is on the force push positive right now. Um, so I'll just check that again. Then I can go to position, or look at velocity or acceleration. Ultimately, we're going to looking, be looking at acceleration, but velocity will probably be the most useful one. If you fit a line to a velocity graph, you can get acceleration that way. Um, and that's going to be a more reliable or, or easier to interpret graph than the acceleration one. We find the acceleration one jumps all over the place. So I'm going to go ahead and start collecting data, and then I'll let this thing fall. Okay. 
Looks like they're looking for some subs today. Um, now I want to go ahead and adjust the auto scale on this, and we can see uh, you know, a pretty clear change here. That must be where um, my uh, uh, thing hit the my weight hit the bottom. Um, so it looks like this is my good data. Um, so I just want to do an average over that section. So tools, statistics, and then I'll adjust the box. And it looks like around the first. Mm, 10 seconds or so is pretty consistent. And I also know that this stuff at the very beginning that wasn't didn't have any motion on it, that was before I released that thing. So I'm not going to include that data. So I'll go to Tools and Swap Cursors. And that lets me adjust the other side of the data that I'm using. So I'll scoot that over here. And I'm going to just use, say, from 6 seconds to 10 seconds for all this stuff. So we have an average force of negative 1, uh, so that's uh, negative 1 newtons, or since this says pushes are positive, that means that hook was pulling with a force of 1 newton. Now, um, I don't think I remember to calibrate or to zero my, my force scale, so you know, this data right now is a little suspect. I would probably collect another data set before I use this, but anyway, um, we use from 6 to 10 seconds. Um, every time we do an analysis. And then I'll go ahead and switch this over to velocity. Okay, and then looks like my scale is going to be a little bit off on this one. Um, we get some, some weird readings up here. So I'm going to zoom in manually. And we're looking from 6 to 10 seconds, so that's the data that I need. Um, now, we can see that we have this um, pretty clear increasing speed trend, which is what we were looking for. Notice that it's very, very slow still, which is what we expect on something like this. Um, let's go ahead and select the Linear Fit tool, and I'll just select that same data. So I'll scoot this side over to about 10 seconds. Oops. All right, looks like 10 seconds wasn't quite right. Let's call it 9.5 and then do my swap cursors again and move this one over to 6 seconds. That's where my good data was uh, was starting on the other graph. And then I've got a slope here of negative 0 0.00927 meters per second per second. So in 0 0.00927 meters per second per second downward is the direction on this. And I can use that to figure out the rate at which this whole thing is accelerating. So that's the data gathering part of this. Now you can also make a few changes here. Obviously you could change the weight that's hanging down. Um, you could change the amount of weight that's hanging from these things. And then the other piece here, these are all detachable, though maybe not with one hand. There we go. These are all detachable and I have an extra set of longer arms that can fit in here. Ooh, one-handed PVC fitting. That is tricky. Well, I can't get that one one-handed. Okay. So you can do one or both arms and then have a different, have a weight hanging on both sides. Um, and that allows you to change the rotational inertia of this system. Um, well, it matches. Wow, and be careful if you make it uneven like that. That was, uh, that was a little scary. Uh, so uneven masses will make it uh, um, unbalanced like that. It'll make it shake more when it's rotating. Um, and so that, uh, that can be a little dangerous. These things are just hanging from a string. Um, so we want to make sure we keep the angular speed relatively slow. So if you're doing a big torque, make sure you have a big rotational inertia as well. Um, small torques you can do, smaller rotational inertia. Just keep it relatively slow to keep it safe. Um, so here we're looking at Newton's second law for rotation and verifying that that works. Or, you know, if you have a better idea for what to test with this setup, then go for it. See what you can do. And let's do some science.